Bum, 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 bum. Greetings all. Last Outrider here, and I am back on my laptop. Are you happy? Yes. The phone cam is gone, unless something bad happens again. This video is going to address the topic of the Navis Novilite, which I talked about in my previous video, which was about the Emperor's text-to-speech device, saying that while they're good videos, uh, mansplaining 40K, they are anachronistic. They are antiquated. The, the 40K they explain, even though the videos are only four years old, is long dead. And this is something that I've told people for years. There is no such thing as permanent canon in 40K. Never has been. 40K has been constantly developing and changing its story and its history since its inception. And everything that's happening now could, will, be retconned five, ten years from now. It'll be a new storyline. That's how they keep selling products. Okay, even just during the Horus Heresy novels, the 40K universe, at the time the Flight of the Eisenstein was written to the time the last book was written, changed. So back to navigators. Um, when I talk about the future of 40K, I talk about it not from considering 30 years of pseudo canon, but in terms of what's happened in the last 12 months only, and see where is GW heading with this, and that's how I can see. And a lot of that requires the ignoring of everything you know and love about 40K because it's, it's, it's going to be erased. Um, in this case, 40, uh, the, the, the authors have declared that the Siege of Terra is going to be the same story that we know and the outcome, obviously, that we know, but it's going to have surprises. It's going to have unexpected twists and turns to it. Um, that even diehard people who think they know the lore will not see coming. Uh, and that's because those diehard people who think they know the lore believe in canon, believe in things that cannot change, and they are wrong. So if I was a developer writing the story for 40K, and I had to keep it the same but make it fundamentally different, how would you do that? You do that by focusing on the things that haven't been developed, the ideas that haven't been written about before. And one of the things that I said in the other video is that navigators have never been developed. I also said that uh, 40K has always been a parallel of Frank Herbert's Dune. The Emperor has always been based upon uh, the... Um, kind of a combination of the Emperor and the Imperium in 40K, but also mashed together with uh, Paul, Atreides, Muad'Dib, when he, after he becomes Emperor, but then he gives up being Emperor. But you, it's basically both of those characters put together. Um, Paul the, wants to save humanity from dependence upon the spice and predestiny, which is caused by the spice. Basically, the spice allows you to uh, perceive future events, which leads people to believe that there's no choice, which leads to a very depressing kind of Life And his idea was he wants to get rid of predestiny, which basically means he wants to get rid of spice and the ability to foresee the future. So predestiny still exists. It's just that humanity can't know what it is. So ignorance is bliss. Well, this is basically the storyline of 40K. And it's one of those things that is written and so ingrained in 40K that they can no longer change that. 
the emperor wants to save humanity. You can't retcon that. He can't sit, wake up tomorrow and say, the emperor no longer wants to save humanity. So they're stuck with the Dune storyline. Uh, and if you're going to do that, then you have to look at who were the enemies of the emperor in Dune. And the enemies of the emperor in Dune were the navigators. Now I'm going to talk about the navigators that I've given you that introduction. The, nav the Imperium <clears throat> has always really been the same like in Dune, a political tripod. You have the uh, Adeptus Terra, right? And the Imperium, main Imperium, which is run by the Emperor. You have the Adeptus Mechanicus, who are the tech priests, obviously. They control the technology. And you have the Navis Nobilitae, the navigators. And they control interstellar travel, just like you have three houses of power in Dune. Um, the Emperor, just like in Dune, comes up with a plan that <laughs> basically makes one of those entities obsolete. The emperor wants to free humanity from the warp and its corrupting influences. OK. Uh, unfortunately, the warp is the entire reason for being for the navigators. It, they're not, they don't just fly ships. That's basically their, how they make money. But what they really do is, is chart and study the warp. Their real purpose for existence is studying the warp, not flying ships, same as the navigators in Dune. They fly ships, sure. But their real purpose is studying and charting the future and uh, the, the predestiny of humanity. Um, if the emperor removes dependence upon the warp, he doesn't just make navigators obsolete as interstellar travel obsolete. He erases the entire reason for being, all of their study. You know, over 10,000 years, we don't know how long the navigators have been around. We know they predate the Imperium. Um, even during the great warp storms when they weren't flying, they were still studying the warp on Earth, on Terra, and everything like that. It, their whole existence is studying and understanding the warp. And the Emperor has a secret plan to to make the warp irrelevant. It's deeper than just getting rid of interstellar flight. It's making the entire warp irrelevant, which means everything they've studied for the last thousands and thousands of years becomes meaningless. How devastating would that be to the navigator houses? Of course, that's a reason for rebellion. If you want another analogy, imagine that the emperor wanted to free humanity from the machine. He wanted to move to a psychoactive technology like the Eldar, right? Which doesn't have mechanical parts, but is grown or, or, or organic like the Tyranids. No more machine. What would, the, what would Mechanicum do? If they heard that not only does the emperor want to get rid of machine, he wants to make all technology, as we understand it, meaningless. That means everything they've ever studied is now pointless because all technology is going to be removed from the Imperium. Of course they would go crazy and turn against the Imperium and try to stop this plan. But the difference is, is that the cult of Mars has the largest military in, in the galaxy, dwarfing even the Astra Militarum. So 
that won't happen. The Navis Nobilite doesn't have a military. So they are left to subterfuge. Uh, they can't attack anybody directly, so what they can do is use their knowledge of the warp to attack the emperor. The details of it, I don't know. I just know that that is where we're heading. How did they go about talking or fermenting the chaos powers or whatever to, to get them to attack the Imperium? I don't know. We'll find out about that in the books. But the navigators will end up being behind all of this because they just have to be. It makes everything make sense. <clears throat> Why did the emperor lose all interest in the Great Crusade, suddenly. A written... I'm going to now spend another 10 minutes talking about Horus before I talk about that. This will be the second part. I may have made another video about Horus, but I'm not. I'm going to tell you about Horus now. Horus has been the crux of the Horus heresy, obviously, since the beginning, but Horus himself as a character has changed fundamentally three times. First, he was just a Primarch with daddy issues who had an existential crisis asking why did the emperor um, make him war master and then disappear into his dungeon uh, and abandon him. And so that was the reason for the rebellion. Uh, Games Workshop decided that was just really petty and stupid, uh, so they're not going to go with it. And that was at the beginning of the Horus Heresy novels. So they reinvented with Horus uh, 2.0. Um, he dies, he gets brought back, now he's chaos corrupted Horus. Uh, and he's brutal and sadistic and, you know, flayed people all around his ship and everything like that. But they ran into story plot lines with that, too, in terms of what happens with the Mourn Veil, what happens with all his closest advisors, what happens with all these people who know him, including his brothers, and say, wait a second, you're not Horus. What happened to you, dude? This is crazy. If you met somebody who had suddenly a radic... Horus, who used to have a great sense of humor, the charismatic leader, the, the uh, uh, jovial, joking comedian, which you saw in the, in the pre-heresy, uh, Lunar Wolves, suddenly becomes a mas humorless masochist. I'm not masochist, sadist. You know what I mean? Just right after this event where they bring him back and nobody questions it. And nobody can see the chaos corruption, Lorgar, and all these other people. They can't see that this is not Horus anymore. It was a dead end. So they got rid of that. Um, and they first they made him demon-possessed. Then they made him partially demon-possessed. Then they got rid of the whole retcon, the entire thing. And he went back to being happy, jovial Horus. For, 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 for years. They just got rid of all of that until um, he went through the, the hell gate and walked the, on Moloch and walked the uh, obsidian path like the emperor did. The obsidian path, which used to be called the golden path, which is what it was called in Dune. Then that disappeared for a number of years, and now it's back as the obsidian path. That's the path that the emperor walked that gave him this godlike understanding and fragmented his memory. Um, which really what the Obsidian Path is, or Golden Path is, which is exactly what uh, Paul Atreides walked in Dune and what Doctor Strange walked in the Avengers uh, Endgame Part 1, is he basically, just like Doctor Strange, or Doctor Strange, just like him, sat down cross-legged, for an extremely long period of time, maybe like three days, and just went through every single possible future for humanity until he found the one that frees humanity from predestiny. So it was far more than 14 million, okay? 
it was near infinite. Doctor Strange found his one ending out of 14 million, and Paul found his one path out of countless, and the emperor walked the obsidian path and found his one path out of the countless ones he had to experience in uh, the warp. And that's what fragmented his memory. What fragmented his memory is he went through, you know, 50 billion different timelines, and they're all incorporated into him, so he gets confused. This same memory fragmentation Horace has now. They constantly describe him as being distracted, seeing things that aren't as if the, he's expecting them to be there, but they're not there. He's, he's lived the Horace heresy who knows how many millions of times uh, until he finds the one that he can win. Um, all classic Dune. So that is Horus 3.0. Horus 3.0 is, that explains why he's no longer jovial. He's lost his sense of humor. He's now much older than all the other Primarchs. Okay, so now Horus could be about the same age as the Emperor. Uh, he's not a child anymore. The descriptions of him are fundamentally, he is now, this is what places him above the other Primarchs because he has aged, he has gained this experience and this knowledge far beyond his brothers so that he is no longer a son of the emperor but closer to the peer, though not in psychic power or physical form, in wisdom. He is close to the peer of the emperor. So now he's as if you're a Gretchen trying to figure out how to defeat a war boss. Uh, he, he has the same mental capacity of a war boss, but he's in the body of a Gretchen. So you can't just go and fight him head on. That's what I mean. This is the new Horus. This is the Horus of today. Doesn't matter who Horus was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. This is Horus today. And you have to base your guesses of what's going to happen in the future of 40K based upon who Horus is today. When Horus meets the Emperor, it's not going to be about daddy issues. It's not going to be about why did you make me war master. It's not going to be about why did you hide the warp from us. It's not going to be about any of those things anymore. It's going to be about something different, something deeper, something more mature uh, that they haven't revealed yet. From both of them walking the obsidian path. Um, which brings me back to the navigators. All the navigators had to do, they probably just went and talked to Zinch, right? I mean, the changer of ways. Okay, you may find out that, the, 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 that one of the major navigator houses just became a cultist faction of Zinch. They want to change the ways. And Zinch came up and gave them the idea. Uh, what you need to do is create this kind of Horus heresy situation. Don't worry, I'll help you do it. I love changing things. I love fucking with the status quo. And the Emperor is the biggest status quo in the galaxy. So I'll do this for free. You don't even have to worship me. I'm just going to do it because I love this stuff. Um, which is why you wouldn't see any immediate corruption from them because they know he knows that if he did see any corruption in the, in, in, from them, it would, it would destroy the, the plan. <sighs> that was a big circle, I know, and nearly 20 minutes of talking about this. So this is why you have fundamentally the same story while developing the unwritten aspects of 40K. And that's where you're going to get the, the shocks 
That's where you're just going to have to accept that there is no canon. They will change and develop what they want. Um, so I hope that explains where this comes from. You know, the navigators are basically, if you want to go back to Dune references, are basically a mixture between the navigator houses and the Bene Gesserit. Okay, just like the emperor is mixed between the imperium and the and Paul and the Fremen, so the navigators are a mixture between Bene Gesserit and, and the navigators put together. Human breeding, human future. They have their own plan for human evolution. Okay, separate from the emperor's plan. It probably has to do with navigators being on the top. Um, and the Mechanicus is a mixture of, of basically the Mintats. Right? They, except they're, they're the ones that, they're the planners. They're, they're the experts that you go to whenever you want to, to ask some deep question, some deep analysis. You go to the Mechanicus, not just for technology, but for analysis. Uh, logistics, they're the ones you go to. They're the Mentats of the Imperium, not just tech priests. Uh, I hope that explains it more. If you've got more questions, let me know and I'll try to detail it even more. Until next time, bye. Hmm.